If you're thinking about getting into tech or even switching careers, this video is for you because the job market is about to look very different in 2026. Today, we're breaking down the most in demand and highest paying tech careers that you can actually start working towards right now. No four year degree required. Every career that we're gonna to cover today meets these three criteria. There are more jobs than qualified people to fill them, meaning real opportunity. They're global. You don't have to live in Silicon Valley to find one of these jobs. And you can learn the skills without going broke, meaning you don't need a degree or tons of very expensive certification. And as a bonus, every job on this list is future proof, meaning AI isn't about to replace it anytime soon. So whether you're looking to level up, start fresh, or just find a career that pays you what you're actually worth, these are the tech jobs to keep your eye on in 2026. Now, let's start with the one that everyone's talking about, artificial intelligence. Yeah, there is tons of hype around AI right now, but behind that hype is real jobs with real paychecks. I'm talking $100,000 to $130,000 for entry level roles and well over $180,000 once you've built some experience. AI and machine learning engineers are the ones that are building the training models that power everything from chatbots to self-driving cars. But it's not all about writing prompts. It's about understanding how data math and code come together to make these systems work. You definitely will need some solid Python skills and at least a basic understanding of how statistics and algorithms work. But don't think you need a PhD to start. Plenty of people are breaking through with just some basic online courses and hands on projects. For example, build small models, publish them on GitHub and show you know how to solve the problems needed. The challenge here though is how fast AI changes. Tools that are hot right now could be old news by next year. So instead of chasing every new framework, focus on the fundamentals and how models learn, how to evaluate results, and how to use AI responsibly. Companies also love people who understand where AI fits into business, like healthcare, cybersecurity, or networking. That domain knowledge can really set you apart fast. So, if you love problem solving, experimenting, and learning constantly, this could be one of the most exciting and future-proof paths in tech right now in 2026. Now, we can't talk about the best jobs in 2026 without mentioning networking, the backbone of everything in IT. Every server, every cloud, every AI system, they all depend on one thing, a solid network. And with more devices, more remote work, and more cloud infrastructure than ever before, skilled network engineers are in serious demand. Pay-wise, this is still one of the more stable and yet still high-paying paths in tech right now. Entry-level network admins or even just basic technicians can expect anywhere from $70,000 to $90,000 a year, while experienced engineers and architects often make anywhere from $120,000 to $160,000 and more, especially if you're working with large enterprise or service provider networks. But here's the thing. Networking isn't just cabling and routers anymore. The future is automation, software-defined networking, and cloud integration. If you're learning tools like Python, Ansible, and APIs, or platforms like Cisco DNA Center, you're already ahead of most of the people out there. The challenge here though, is this field sometimes moves slower than others, but when it shifts, it shifts really hard. Some of the traditional engineers are still catching up to automation and scripting. So now is the perfect time to skill up and stand out from the crowd. My advice though, nail the fundamentals first, subnetting, VLANs, routing, switching, then start layering on automations and cloud networking. Build home labs, use simulators like EvenG and Packetracer to actually break things on purpose. That is how you learn. Networking is never going to go away. It's just evolving as it always has. And if you can be the bridge that gaps the classic infrastructure and the modern automation, you're going to be one of the most valuable people in the room in 2026. Now, while we're talking career paths and networking, if you are trying to level up, the secret isn't just learning new commands. It is picking environments that let your skills compound. That is why I like what Meter is doing. If you haven't heard of them, think of Meter as the team that builds the whole network and helps you run it. 
instead of stitching together one vendor for the switches, another for the Wi-Fi, and someone else entirely for the firewalls, you get one integrated stack for wired, networking, secure Wi-Fi, and even indoor cellular when you need coverage or redundancy. It is designed to fit together from day one, so you're not the glue holding things together. Here's why that matters for your career. When your stack is unified and observable, you spend less time hurting and going back and forth with vendors and more time doing the work that can earn you promotions. Think automation, standardizing configs, writing playbooks, improving security posture, and rolling out multi-site changes without all the extra drama. Those resume bullets that read led and designed, not chased problems, really stand out. Day to day, you use a clean cloud dashboard with real visibility and control. And because it's delivered as a service for one monthly fee, Meter does the site survey, installing cabling, monitoring, and ongoing operations with your team. Fewer moving parts and clear ownership and a faster path from ticket to done. That's the kind of environment where you can actually focus on growing from help desk to knock to network engineer, to architect, to leadership. If you want your next steps to be about impact rather than firefighting, take a look at Meter today. Thanks to Meter for sponsoring this episode. Head to meter.com forward slash IT career to book a demo. That is M-E-T-E-R dot com forward slash IT career to book your demo. All right, so next up is cybersecurity. And let's be honest, this field isn't slowing down anytime soon. Every year, the number of cyber attacks, data breaches, and ransomware incidents keeps going up, and companies are desperate for people who can protect their systems. Right now, cybersecurity engineers in the US are earning anywhere from $90 to $150,000, and senior level or specialist roles can easily push well over $180,000 a year. The demand is actually so high for every qualified person, there are multiple job openings, and the gap is only gonna get wider heading into 2026. So what does it take to get started in this field? Well, for starters, a solid foundation in networking, operating systems, and scripting, plus certifications like CompTIA Security Plus, Certified Ethical Hacker, or even CISSP once you've got the experience. You don't have to have them all though. Just start with one, learn the fundamentals, and build hands-on skills with labs, or even use platforms like Try Hack Me or Hack the Box. The challenge here is that cybersecurity can be extremely stressful at times. You're dealing with constant threats and real-time problems, but that's also what makes it so exciting. No two days are the same, and you know your work matters. My advice though, focus on learning by doing. Build home labs, practice detecting or patching vulnerabilities, and document everything you learn. Employers love seeing proof that you can actually apply your skills in the real world. Cybersecurity is one of the few tech careers that is both high paying and mission driven. If you wanna make a difference, protect people and still get paid well, this is your lane. Now, let's talk about the cloud because honestly, it is where everything is headed. Companies of all sizes are moving away from traditional servers and into platforms like AWS. Azure, and Google Cloud, and they need skilled people to design, secure, and manage those environments. Cloud engineers and architects are making serious money right now. Most start anywhere around $100,000 to $130,000 a year, and once you build some experience, you can easily earn up to $160,000 to $200,000 plus a year, especially if you hold advanced certifications. These roles are in demand everywhere, from startups to massive enterprises because uptime, scalability, and cost optimization all depend on having the right cloud setup. The skill set is broad though. You'll want to understand networking, virtualization, automation, and security along with tools like Terraform, Docker, or even Kubernetes. Certifications like the AWS Solution Architect or the Azure Administrator can give you a huge boost in credibility. But remember, 
Search can only help if you apply what you learn. One of the challenges here is the constant evolution. The cloud changes fast. What's best practices today might be outdated by next quarter. So stay adaptable. Learn one platform really well first and then start branching out. Because all honesty, cloud networking is cloud networking. The cloud is the cloud wherever you go. If you like solving big infrastructure problems and puzzles and don't mind a little complexity, this is one of the best paying and most flexible paths in tech. And with hybrid work and AI adoption exploding, cloud pros will stay in demand well past 2026. Next up is a role that's quietly becoming one of the most valuable in all of tech, data engineering. See, companies are drowning in data from customers, apps, sensors, you name it, but they need skilled people to make sense of it all. Data engineers are the ones who build the systems that collect, clean, and organize all that data. And so analysts and AI models can actually use it. Paywise, this field is doing great right now. Entry-level data engineers can expect anywhere from 90 to $110,000 a year. While experienced pros often make $150,000 to $180,000. And if you're working in industries like finance or healthcare, where data accuracy is critical, salaries can go even higher. To get into this career, you'll need a strong foundation in Python, SQL, and cloud platforms like AWS or Google Cloud. You'll want to learn about data pipelines, ETL tools, and databases, both traditional ones like PostgreSQL and modern ones like Snowflake or BigQuery. The challenge here though, is it's not glamorous work. You deal with messy data, broken pipelines, and systems that never stop growing. But that's also where the fun can be, solving problems that makes entire organizations run smoother. My advice here though, is build your own mini data project. Maybe pull data from a public API, clean it and visualize it, showing how you can turn raw information into insight. Because here's the truth, every company wants to be data driven, but they can't be without data engineers. This career is stable, high paying, and absolutely gonna be critical going into 2026. Okay. Now let's talk about one of the most flexible and honestly, one of the most creative roles in tech right now, the full stack developers. These are the folks who can build an entire web app from front to back, everything from the interface you click on to the database that it connects to. And in 2026, the best developers will also know how to plug AI tools or APIs into what they're building. Salary wise, full stack devs are doing great right now. You're looking at starting out anywhere from 85 to $120,000 a year and easily break over $150,000 a year once you have experience or start specializing in in-demand frameworks like React or Node.js. Add some cloud or AI integration skills and you can easily push that into the upper ranges. The skill set is wide here. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and backend languages like Python or Go, plus database and version control. The biggest challenge is staying sharp across so many different areas. Things change fast in web development and burnout can be real if you try to learn everything at once. Again, my advice here is pick a tech step and go deep first. Once you're comfortable, start branching out a little bit, learn a little DevOps and a little AI integration, maybe how to use APIs like OpenAI or Hugging Face. Companies love full stack devs because they can move fast and solve problems end to end. So if you like seeing your work go from an idea in your head to a live app or website in people's hands, this is one of the most rewarding and future-proof careers that you can jump into right now. Now, here's a role that a lot of people are overlooking, but it's becoming one of the most valuable in tech, AI product manager or AI solution architect. These are the people who can connect the dots between a business's goals and AI technology. They're not the ones training the models. They're the ones figuring out how AI should be used, what problems they can actually solve, and how to integrate it into real products. 
pay-wise, this field is actually heating up quite a bit. Product managers are averaging anywhere from $120,000 to $160,000 a year, while solution architects, especially those working in enterprise environments, can easily clear $180,000 to well over $200,000 a year. But here's the challenge. You need to understand both sides, tech and strategy. You don't have to be a machine learning engineer, but you do need to know what AI can and can't do. At the same time, you gotta be great at communication, road mapping, and working with engineers and executives. The best way to break into and build experience on either side is maybe start as a product manager or software developer, then learn enough AI fundamentals to speak the language. You can easily start by managing small AI powered projects or prototypes. The cool part about this role is you get to help shape how AI is getting used ethically, responsibly, and in ways that actually help people. If you're someone who loves both tech and people, and you've got the big picture mindset, this is one of the most future proof and in all honesty can be one of the most rewarding jobs out there in 2026. All right, so last but definitely not least, let's talk about DevOps and Site Reliability Engineers or SREs for short. These are the folks who make sure everything actually works once developers finish building it. They're the bridge between coding and operations. The people who keep websites, apps, and systems running smoothly 24-7. Salaries here are no joke. Most DevOps engineers start at around $100,000 to $130,000 a year, and experienced SREs can easily earn $160,000 to $200,000, especially if you're managing critical systems or working in a cloud heavy environment. Skill sets here are broad. You'll need experience with Linux, networking, automation tools like Terraform, Ansible, and containers like Docker and Kubernetes, and continuous integration systems like Jenkins or GitHub Actions. It's a lot to learn, but the payoff can be huge because these roles touch everything. The challenge obviously is there's a lot of pressure on you. When something breaks, you're the one that everyone is calling. But on the flip side, you get to automate, optimize, and make systems bulletproof, which can be incredibly satisfying. The best way to start is by setting up your home lab, building and deploying something, break it, and then fix it. Learn how infrastructure really works. That hands-on experience will teach you more than any course could ever do. DevOps and SREs are the unsung heroes in tech. If you love solving problems, building reliable systems, and don't mind a little chaos and now and then, this career can set you up for life, both in demand and in pay. So whether you go all in on AI, cloud, or something else on this list, the biggest takeaway here is that tech careers are evolving fast. The people who will win in 2026 aren't necessarily the smartest. They're the ones who stay curious, keep learning, and keep adapting. And if there's one area that is going to be absolutely critical, no matter where you go in tech, it's cybersecurity. Every one of these roles, from AI to DevOps, depends on it. In fact, cybersecurity is about to go through one of the biggest shifts we've ever seen. I actually just made a full breakdown on what is changing there, the opportunities, and how you can start preparing right now, even if you're brand new to the field. You can check that out right here. It will give you a complete roadmap for cybersecurity careers going into 2026. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, keep learning.